الله الرحمن الرحيم. So we're gonna uh, start chapter two, motion, and this is the first section in this chapter which is describing motion. Inshallah, shabab, in every single lecture, I will do the following. I will give you at the beginning what we call is as the objectives. Objectives means the goals. In other words, what as a student, what as a student, I will be able to do after finishing this lecture. First, and this is the most important part, I have to know how accurately I will be able to describe the motion of an object and to explain what is the differences between scalar quantities and vector quantities and also to recognize the difference between distance displacement in general I would say if we would like to summarize all of them how accurately we can describe the motion of an object scientifically I think if I will be able to describe the motion of an object by the way when we say object because I'm gonna say this word many times. Objects mean anything that we are studying. Yani a moving car, um, a person, a bike, anything under consideration, we will call it as an object, okay? So if you would like, we have something that moves, we need to describe this motion, we have to have something to help us to describe it. These things are, for example, the reference point, the distance, it will travel the direction of the motion and the speed. We need all of these things to be able to describe it in a good way. Yani if I ask you, uh, can you describe the motion of this object? You can't simply say that yeah, it's moving. <laughs> you didn't describe it. If you'd like to describe it, you have to say that yes, it's started from such a point, that's the reference point. It has traveled such and such distance. So we have used the distance. It moved in this direction, you have used the direction, and it traveled with a speed equals such and such. This is the right way to describe the motion, so we're going to need these things. So we're going to discuss them one by one, the speed, the distance, the displacement, the direction, and so on. Let us start with the first point. Before we describe the motion, I think we need to know what exactly does it mean, the motion. We have a very simple definition. Motion. If the object is going to move, it has to change its position relative to a reference point. Oh, that's the reference point that we are talking about. This is the first thing that we're going to use. Number one, we need a reference point. Uh, Shabab, do you know what does it mean relative to? Yeah. Okay, this is very important because I'm going to talk about it many times today. Relative, okay? So if the position of the object is it changing relative to a reference point, we can say that it's moving. Otherwise, it will be standstill. Yeah, for example, look at that, Shabab. Hmm. What do you think? Is it moving right now? Hmm. The answer is? Yes. Yes. Yes, it is. Yes, it is moving, of course. Yeah, I can see it's moving now. Yes, that's right. But it's moving relative to what? I think, I think. All of us will choose the reference point unconsciously. The reference point to be the tree relative to the tree. Yes, he is changing its position, right? So he has a motion. But look at that, Shabab. I'm just talking about the importance of the reference point. If one of the students say that I will choose because it's free, you can choose any reference point. I will choose this spear. Can you see the Shabab? He chose the spear to be the reference point. It's okay, no problem with that. But in this case, if he said that this person is moving relative to the spear, is it right or wrong? Wrong. 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 Hash, babe, you got the point? You got what I want yeah. to say? So it's very important to define what is the reference point. You said that it's moving relative to what? If it is the tree, yes, it was moving. Relative to the spear, it's not moving. So the reference point is very important to describe the motion. This is the first point. The second, the distance and the displacement. And I think now you know, you know the difference, yeah, at least yeah, the difference in the translation, yeah, the meaning. But what in physics the uh, uh, differences between distance and displacement? We have two differences. And using these two differences, you will be able to 
solve the problems. Be with me. It will be simple, inshallah. I will tell you the differences using an example. This example is not in the book, but it will make things much easier. We have an object, a car, a bicycle, anything. A person decided to move from the initial point, xi, the start point, to that point. And it will take a certain path. This is the path it will take, path. The way and it will travel through this way until it, it ends up at x5. This is the initial position and this is the final position. Distance mean, the distance mean all the length of this path. The whole length of this path of this way is what we call the distance. Keep that in mind. Distance is a scalar quantity. Yes, we have to talk about scalar quantities as well. Scalar. What is the scalar quantities? Scalar quantities are quantities in physics that they need only the values to be fully understood, to be fully defined. Like what? Like the temperature, like the mass, like the volume, the density. If, for example, when I say that the mass of the book is 2 kilograms, does it add any information if I say that 2 kilograms to the right or to the left? No. No. If at the direction now, the direction will not add any information. We don't need it in the mass. So the mass is not a vector. It doesn't need a direction. So it will be a scalar quantity. But displacement, for example, that displacement need a direction. The force F is a vector quantity because we need two things to be able to understand it in a good way. We need how much is it in Newtons and also in which direction it's, it's, it's applicable. Is it to the right? Or to the, because it, of course, will be a much difference if it is to the right or to the left, the force. So force is a vector. This is the main difference between scalars and vectors. Scalars, scalars needs only values, vectors, they need values and direction. They are very, very sensitive to the direction. Vectors could be plus and they could be minus as well, depending on the direction of the vector. Yani. When you talk about the displacement, what is the direction of the displacement? We have talked about the, uh, the distance. We said that again, distance is the length of the whole path. It's a scalar quantity. It's always positive. This is the distance. Displacement is a little bit more different. Displacement is the shortcut, the straightforward path between the initial position and the final position. Straightforward. This is the displacement. This is the first difference. The second, displacement is a vector quantity. Yeah, it has a direction. Type. What is the direction of the displacement? The direction of the displacement is from the start to the end. So in this example, it would be that direction. We said that, Shabab, a moment before that, let us talk about the vectors again. Because vectors is a little bit more difficult than scalars because in the vector you need value and direction. And if you put, put it positive and it's negative, it will be wrong. We have a displacement, Shabab. I have a displacement, let us call it displacement as delta, for example. Delta X, delta whatever, yeah. let us just put it, this symbol for the displacement is yeah. And I told you that the displacement is minus two meter. What does it mean for you? What did you get from that? What does it mean minus two meter? Do we have a distance less than zero? What, what, what does it mean minus two meters? Huh? The direction. Yes, uh, it means uh, the direction of the, um, of the motion. The direction of the motion, that's right. Hassan, do you mean that from the displacement we can we can know the direction of the motion? Uh, we were in, the dis, uh, in the displacement, displacement. Uh, we, should, we must know the direction. That's right, fantastic, yes. Yes, because displacement has a direction. So this negative sign in the displacement means the direction. The object is moving to the left, for example. Shabab, by the way, we have this axis. Right, if the vector to the right will be positive, to the left will be negative, upward will be positive, 
downward will be negative. This is a kind of agreement. There is no physics synergy. Then just agreement between all the people. Plus upward positive, downward negative, right positive, negative. So this to the left it will be negative. So the negative sign means it's to the left, for example, or downward. Yeah. And the distance he traveled is two meters. It has two things, the value and the direction. How to calculate the displacement? In a very simple way. Very simple, is The final position minus the initial position. For this reason, as you can see, the displacement could be positive and it could be negative and it could be zero as well. Look at that. It could be positive value, it could be negative value, and it could be zero. Positive if x final is bigger than x initial, as you can see from the equation. And it will be negative x final is less than x initial. And it will be zero if x final equal x initial. Yeah, I, I think I can understand this and that, but this is a little bit weird. How could, how could we have a situation in the real life where the object has moved already? Shabab, here we mean that the object has moved, but the displacement is zero. Can we have something like that? Yeah, we have a distance, but we don't have a displacement. Can we have something like that in real life? Yes, if you go and uh, come to the same place. Fantastic, that's right. X final equal X B. Yani, yani, the same. It's the same point. So the object start a journey and move in any way. It doesn't matter about any straight line or whatever. At the end of the day, you will return it back to its initial position. So X final and X initial are the same. So the displacement is zero. But the distance, is it zero, Abakar? The distance, is it zero? Uh, no, of course. Yes. You got the shabab? You got the distance, the difference between. Can you feel the differences between between the distance and the displacement? How to calculate these? How to calculate that? That would help you to solve problems, believe me. But this is the difference between scale and bit. We have talked about that. And now we have an example. We have this object, a runner, that will start from this point. This is the start point. This is xi. And he end up with uh, this mark, the 20, OK? So that should be x final. And the question is, how much is the distance and how much is the displacement? Huh? Yeah, the easiest part, of course, would be the distance because distance is po it should be always positive. It doesn't have any direction, so you don't need to think about the direction. Saleh. Uh, the distance uh, 18. Yes, uh, yes. How come it, come it could be easy? Can you, can you give me some details, uh, Saleh, please? Uh, 15 and plus uh, 30. Yes. So we have this stage, we have two stages here, right, Shabab? In the journey, we have two stages, one up and one down, right? So this is 50 plus 30. Uh, uh, who is that? Saleh. Saleh. Uh, yes, yes, we agreed that up is plus and down is minus. Why didn't you say that it's minus 30? Uh, because it's uh, we want uh, distance, That's not... Discipline. Excellent. Definitely right. Thank you, Asala. This is the point we are talking about. You asked me about the distance. Distance is always positive. I don't need to think about the direction. We need to think about the direction only in the vector quantities, masalan, displacement. Okay, Shabab? Thank you, Asala. Fantastic, Asala. Welcome. So, the second point is what about the displacement, Shabab? How much is the displacement? Let us ask Muhammad, Muhammad Hanif. Yes, 20. Yeah, why? Give me the details, Muhammad. That's right, it's right. But I need some details, yeah. I oh, need you okay. to show the others how you solve it. So, um, hmm? uh, then, um, from the um, beginning point to the end point. So, yes. He's he finish at 30 and he start from 50, so it's 20. Okay, okay, thank you very much. That's right, I know I know, I know that how to solve it, to solve it. Okay, but I need more details. Thank you, Muhammad. Can anyone just give me some details? As Muhammad said, it's 20, I agree with Muhammad. Yani, let us uh, ask Mamdouh, for example. Mamdouh, can you give me some details how it could be 20? 
Uh, okay, it's uh, 20 positive because uh, 50 uh, is uh, bigger and it's positive to go, it's going up. Yes. And 30, it's going down, it's minus. So, so we take the positive. Yes, Hassan, I think Hassan, you mean that you have added the displacement in this direction and the displacement in that, right? Yeah, and you can say that it's delta 1 plus delta 2, for example, is that right? Undo. Yes. Yeah, that's right. But we are now we have two yani we have two steps in the journey. We can add the displacement these to that, but keep in mind that each one of them should have a direction. Now you have to choose the sign of each one of them. You yourself. You will choose the sign of each of them. So what about the 50 shabab? So we have two positive. values. Two values. Oh, 50. Is it plus or minus? So choose the positive. It's yes, uh, of 50. It's, it's, yes, it's a plus 50 because so it's upward. And upward for us is plus. Agree? And what about the 30? Uh, yes. The 30, as Mamdouh said. Minus. 30 to downward, so it should be negative, because downward is negative for us. So we have 50 yes. minus, minus 30, that will end up with, as uh, Mamdouh, and also as Muhammad said, yeah, it should be plus 20 meter, or we can say in another way, you can say that it's 20 meter north. Both are right. Type. That's right. Thank you, Mamdouh. That's fantastic, Mamdouh. Thank you very much. Uh, Mamdouh Khalid. Okay. <clears throat> now, Shabab, I need another solution for delta. More simpler solution, and we need another way to find delta. Of course, should give me that same result, yeah. Huh. Ah, Shabir. Who is that? Muhammad Jabir? Muhammad Jabir. Yes, Doctor. Uh, actually, we can take the distance from the start to the uh, from the x initial yes. to the x final. And we say, and we say, we, we see it goes to the north, so it's uh, positive. positive. That's right, fantastic, fantastic. That's just fantastic. This is the simple, this is right, of course, totally right. We will need it, but also we have to have another way. Yeah, and if you forget about this, you can have that, right? We said at the beginning that displacement is the shortcut, it's x final minus x. This is x final, and it's positive because this is the positive side. Okay, and this is x initial, this is zero. So we have 20 minus zero, we have 20 or plus 20 meters. Yes, we have two ways to solve this problem. But you have to enrich your mind with many ways to solve the problems. But so far, so good. So we have talked about three parameters up till now to describe them. Don't forget, but don't forget, we are trying to describe the motion. We have used the reference points, we have used the distance, we have used the displacement. Now, I think we need to talk about how fast the object is, which is the speed. So, speed simply means how fast an object is. And in mathematics, speed equal the famous equation, distance over time. It's distance over time, and it is measured in meter per second. It could be centimeter per second, it could be kilometers. It depends on the information available in the problem. But could we have an object that moves with a constant speed? What does it mean, a constant speed? A constant speed simply means that an object starts from here, for example, and ends up there. A constant, I, 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 I will, yeah, thank you, Shubak. I'll just go through because we have plenty of questions. Don't worry, we have plenty of questions. This xi and x final and takes some path. It doesn't mean that should be any in a straight line. Mm -hmm. But the speed during the journey has not been changed constant, yani unchanged, uniform, steady. So at each moment in the journey, the speed was constant. That's so difficult in reality, but anyway. So, what about the average speed? We use the average speed to get a rough estimation, rough taqdeer, yani, rough estimation about the velocity, uh, the speed of the object during a certain journey. And in this certain journey, the speed has changed many times. Started from here, goes there, and the speed has been changed many times. In this case, we don't know exactly how much is the speed because it was changing. So we ask about, what about the average speed? 
we have a simple law we will need it Shabab, if you ask it about the average speed do not use anything except this law the average speed total distance by total time okay keep that in mind and what is the difference between the average speed and the instantaneous speed the instantaneous speed means the speed at each second, at each instant during the journey. As you can see, the average speed gives you a rough estimation of the speed during a journey. But it will not give you, I'm talking about the average now. The average will not give you the details. By the way, in the average speed, uh, even if <clears throat> we have the total time even if the object has stopped for some times during the journey we have to add this time to the total time okay but the average speed as a value will not tell us anything about the details yani was the, the car or the object speeding up or slowing down or having some time as rest we don't know we have just one value so the thing that will tell us the details of the journey would be the instantaneous speeds because it's the speed at each second if we know the instantaneous speed during the journey I will be able to know easily how was the object moving the instantaneous speed is the speed that you are looking when you look at the odometer during yani, when we are uh, driving our cars of course yani, every now and again we look at the odometer to check the speed yani. so the speed when you are looking to the odometer at this time you are looking at the instantaneous speed but now we have come to the main part of the lecture and I need your full concentration please graphing motion which means simply that I will give you some graphs graphs yeah we have two axes we have two values two variables y and x one will be on the y and one will be in the x we have straight some straight lines and they will ask you to grab information from this graph if you look at the old exams you, you will be having plenty of questions like that today inshallah i will teach you how to deal with these questions how to solve them in a very simple way just concentrate with me but i need a shabab at the beginning i need a kind of introduction simple introduction to the mathematics yeah, simple mathematics yeah. when we have a straight line like that for each straight line, we have what we call the slope, right? You know, I think you know what this means, right? Slope. Yes, yes. Okay. And yeah. also, we know how to get the slope for any straight line. If I ask you, you know, can you get the slope of this line? You'll say, yes, that's too simple. We need to take two points, not one, Ashba. Don't get the slope from one point. Always get the slope from two points. This is more guaranteed. So we have two points. We have to choose any two points, x1 and x2 and that should be y1 and that should be y2 and the slope in this case will be y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1 agree shabab agree yes 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 okay Time. now we have this the same straight line we have for example fawaz fawaz said that uh, i will choose two different points on the line i don't like these two points they look weird for me. What is the reason? Man? He chose another two word, points, this and that. And he get the slope from these two points. Ashman, what do you expect? Do you expect that Fawaz will get a different slope that we have calculated from these two points or should be the same? Huh? Hassan. Hassan Qudran. The same. It should be the same, right? Because it's just one line. Each one line, Ashman, this I'm mean, just making some rule now. The rule is, for one straight line, we should not have except one slope. Right, Shabab? There is no two slopes for one line. And that's logic, okay? So we will base on that. Remember, for each straight line, we have just one slope. One, one slope. Now we have come to the physics part of it. We have graphs like that. And on the y-axis, we put the distance. This is called the time. Uh, the uh, distance time curve or the position time curve it's a relation between the distance or the displacement or the position and the time on the x-axis 
and we have some straight lines. We have all those straight lines, at least in our course, yeah, in our level. But if I ask any one of you now, what the slope of this line? Let us talk about A. Forget about B now. The slope of the if I have, for example I take this point and that point, you can easily find the slope. It will give me a value. What this value will represent for me? As physics, Yanni, I would say that this value is uh, I think how fast is it going? Yes, it's it's the Swedish bear. How do you know that it's the speed? But let us just the slope the slope of this line should be this divided by that, right? Y over X, right? Agree? Agree, Shabab? The slope will be Y over X, right? Yes. Okay, yes. so there will be distance over time. So what distance over time represents for us, Shabab? Hmm. Let us ask Abdul Aziz again. I'm asking Abdul Aziz. Abdul Aziz. What distance yeah, over time? It's the, it's the speed, right? So that's speed. Oh, so the first thing that we get from this line is, Shabab, this line, because it's mistakenly by some of the students, they thought that the object is moving on top of this line, which is wrong. Shabab, this is not the real motion. We have an object that has moved already. Plus, and we have some data, some data from his motion, okay? And we have drawing this data here. This is not the motion of the object. It's a representation to the motion, okay? How about to imagine the motion? Can we imagine the motion? Yeah, we have an object that has moved one year ago. Yeah, But we have this data. Can we imagine how was it moving? Yes. How fast was it? Yes. Was it moving with a constant speed or not? Yes. Can we know all of these things? Yes, from where? From this graph. This is what I'm teaching you now. First of all, if you would like to know the speed of the object, just to get the slope, because the slope is d over t and d over t is a slope. Yeah, but the first thing that we get from this, that the slope equals the speed. The second thing, what about the straight, what does a straight line, you can see, A is a straight line, B is not straight. At least, yeah, we have some kinks here. A is straight. What does it mean, straight line here? Straight line means, a moment before we said, we agreed that every straight line will be having one slope. And the slope is the speed. Yani, this one will be having one speed. A will have one speed. What does it mean, one speed? What does it mean? An object that moves with one speed. What does it mean? Hmm. Anyone, anyone, Shabab? anyone. Constant speed. An object that moves yes. with con with yes. one speed, yeah, the speed will not change. This is a constant speed. If, uh, whenever I see a straight line like that between distance and time, we will be having another, inshallah, maybe uh, after two lectures, we'll be having another graph, but here we'll be having the velocity. That will be totally different. If we have distance here and time there, we have straight line. That means this object was moving with a constant speed. And we know why it's moving with a constant speed, because it has one slope, and the slope is the speed. So it has one speed, yeah, constant speed. Yeah, and we have, now we have concluded two things. First, the slope of this line is the speed, and this line means the object A was moving with a constant speed. The third, what about this flat line? What does it mean? Zero speed? Yes, that's right. It's zero speed. What does it mean, zero speed? Uh, no moving? Yeah, no, no motion. motion. No, motion. Ob no speed, yeah, and the object is not moving. Look at that. We can conclude it in, in two ways. From 10 to 20, the position was the same. It's not changing its position, right? Not changing its position. There is no motion. Yeah, and the object is a standstill. It's not moving, right? Or you can say that, well, like, the slope of this line is zero. This line has a slope equal zero, and the slope is the speed, so the speed is zero. A speed equal zero means the object is not moving. So the last thing what about steeper slope. Steeper slope means the line that has more slope. As you can see, A is steeper than B. It has more slope than B. And the slope is the speed. If, uh, more steeper means faster, so A is faster than B. Is that clear, Shabab? Because now we're gonna go to the problems from the old. Now let us go to the problems. I'll just leave that for you. Uh, excuse me. Hmm. Yes? 
Uh, okay, I have a question. Uh, the average speed uh, is equal to the total distances uh, divided by total times. But uh, can we also say uh, it's the average of uh, instantiums uh, speed? So uh, no. speed uh, instantiums. No. Speed. No, that's wrong. I will say why. Why? Don't averaging the speed, Shabab. Don't averaging the speed. If you have, if you have in a problem, for example, that's a good question, Hassan. For example, Shabab, I said that in the problem, I have an object that moves from here to there with a speed of two meters per second, and then from here to there with three meters per second. Okay, it has traveled this distance in one minute and this in two minutes. How much is the average speed? Students will just go to the simplest answer. They will say that I have the speed here and the speed there. So the average speed will be 2 plus 3 over 2. Totally wrong. Why? Because the time it takes between the two stages is not the same. If we have one minute here and one minute there, yes, that would be right. But since the time is not the same, we can't average the speed. So. The more guaranteed, yeah, Hassan, the more guaranteed way to get the average speed without thinking about anything, just put the total distance, total time. Total time. In this problem, we don't have the distance, yeah, Habibi. You have to conclude the distance because we have the velocity and we have the time. Shabab, can we get that distance now? Huh? Shabab, I was saying that, I was saying that averaging the speed to get the average is, is wrong. The best way is to find the distance. Total time. We have uh, uh, the speed here and the time. How to get the, the distance? That's so simple. We have the speed. We have the time. We can get the distance. We have the speed. We have the time. We can get the distance. Now, get the total distance over the total time. That will be right. Okay, Shabab? Don't average the speed. Okay. Always get the average speed from total distance to total time. Just, so just look, let us look at some problems first. So here, Shabab, how much is the displacement in this journey we have? This is the initial position and that's x5. Look, Shabab, when I make something like that, I think the problem tend to be so easy. How much is the displacement, the total displacement here? Quickly, I need it quickly. Hmm. So let me ask students who are not raising their hands, like for example, um, uh, but, uh, Sad, Sad Sad, can you hear me? I'm sorry, I'm sad, I'm sad. Sorry, sorry, it's not sad. Sad al Harfi. La la Gibran, Gibran, okay, yes, there is lagging. Gibran. I think it is. Uh, that's the solution, right? Oh, that's by mistake. Anyway, so the solution would be a Shabab. We can solve it in many different ways. Let me solve that for you. The first thing is to say that. This is x initial and this is x final. We are looking for the displacement and we said that displacement is x final minus x initial. So simple. So that's the initial, which is zero. I'm talking about the position top. And the final would be three. So it would be three minus zero that will end up with plus three meters. Shabab, do you follow me? I'm not sure what's happening with the, my internet connection here. Yes. So that's the first the first way to solve this problem. The second way is to get the displacement for each one of these steps. Yeah, and we have delta one here, delta two there, delta three, and delta four. We need to get all of them and then add them together. But we we have to add them with their sign. So delta one is five. 
again delta one is five but it's plus because the object is moving upward so it's plus five delta two is zero there is no motion delta three it's moving downward it's from here to there we have two but it's moving downward it should be minus two and delta four is zero so we will end up with again plus three meters so is we have two ways to solve the problem the average speed Hashbab. this is the initial and this is the final but let me ask you Hashbab, how much is that how much is the displacement in the whole journey huh Hashbab. let me ask so I'm can you sure. see it again please Yes, how much is the displacement, the total displacement? Because we have many displacement here. We have one here, one there. When I say the displacement, you should ask me where? Is it the first, the second, or the total? I'm asking about the total displacement in the whole journey. Okay, Muhammad Jabir. Uh, Muhammad Jabir. Follow Muhammad. Uh, the total displacement is zero. That's right. Delta equals zero because the initial position is the same as the final position. So it should be zero. It looks like yeah. this simply this simply like the object is moving and return back to its initial state its initial position but in the problem we are not asking about the this was we asking about the average speed let me call it as s bar of so yeah anything the average yeah total distance by total time this is the only way we can get the average so we need to find the total i don't think we have any problem with the total time it's 100 seconds what about the total distance? Tab, let us ask Hassan. Hassan is here. Yalla, Hassan. Yes, uh, the total uh, distance is uh, 20, 20 plus uh, 10 plus 10. Plus 10, right? Equals uh, 40. Yes, that will be 40. 40 divided by 100. That will be end up with 0 0.4. We have two objects, two cars, A and B. They have moved already. And this is the data of the motion. The graph is just kind of data between the position and the time for each one of them with time. And the question is, do cars A and B ever have the same speed? If yes, at what time? We have choices. Hashbab. Abdul Hamid. Uh, I think uh, no. Uh, because uh, the A uh, speed uh, this three in increase, but uh, the cut uh, B and uh, uh, complete. Ty, what about this point, uh, Hassan? At that point, don't they have the same speed? Uh, no, because uh, the speed uh, is, rep is represented by the slope. The slope, uh, we will calculate it by two points. Okay, that's, that's, that's good. Point. Definitely right. Definitely right. But, Shabab, when I ask this question to most of the students, if you don't have yani, the answer, all of you, because I have just, you know, I have this experience. All of the students will choose this one. He said that will I add four same place this over that give you the speed so they have the same speed at the intersection point which is totally wrong for a simple reason as hassan as hassan said ya shabab, a moment before we said that straight line means a constant speed so a has a constant speed and b also has a constant speed a is faster than b because it has more slope so for example a has two meter per second and B has one meter per second. And each one of them is a constant. Yani there is no change. They will not change the speed. So if they are moving with a constant speed and they don't have the same speed, how come they will be having the same speed? It will be impossible, right? You might ask me, so what this intersection means? I will tell you. This is how to imagine the real. This is not the real motion, Shabab. This is a representation to the real motion. In the real motion, Shabab, let me tell you how was the motion. I will just make a kind of guessing of the real motion. I will take this value to imagine how was the motion of the two cars. Look at that. At time equals zero at the beginning, yeah. 
A is here at zero position and B is here at 20 meter. يعني B car B was ahead of car A. We are moving in this direction. B is ahead of A بتسبقها with 20 meter. And then they will move. They will start the motion. But because A is faster than B, of course A will just decrease this distance huh, at each second. Look at that. After some time, A will catch B. Yani catch will be at the same position. Ah, uh, here the Look at that. That will happen after four seconds. See, but after four seconds, A and B will be having the same position, not the same speed. A and B will be having the same position after four seconds. Then A, because it's faster, will be ahead of B. That is bad. As you can see, A is ahead of B because it's faster than B. This is the way. This is how they were moving. Ashba, did we imagine this?